All right. Well, hello and welcome. Welcome and hello. Today is Thursday, you guys, which means that it is vlog day. And yeah, I got a, I got a pretty cool little vlog planned out for you guys. I'm going to do that thing, and I, I'm actually going to do it this week, unlike unlike last week. But I'm going to do that thing where I put uh, all of the timestamps right here. going to put a little graphic of all the timestamps right here so you can see what's coming up, what's included in this week's vlog, and where it is in this vlog. Ah, oh, wow, maybe I'm just uh, a little bit out of practice here. That's cool. Um, I think we have all of the segments this week. At least I think we have most of the segments this week. I definitely want to taste a beer. I have an awesome retro vaping prepared. We're going to do a whole mess of vape mail. I've got some news and advocacy stuff I wanted to talk about. We may not do a getting to know Grim Green. I might throw one in there, but I definitely want to get to some viewer mails as well as a very random uh, juice tasting that I'm really excited about as well. But welcome. Welcome. Welcome to the vlog. Before we get too far into this vlog, I do want to do that thing that I like to do that's my new favorite thing where I hear from one of my subscribers. So right now, I'd like to hear from uh, a fella named Chance, but I, I also think it's cool. He goes by another name, or at least his email was. Maybe I shouldn't say this. He called, it, he's, it said Pizza Wolf. And I just thought that was so fucking cool, Pizza Wolf. So, Chance, I want to hear from you, but I'm going to call you Pizza Wolf. Hey, Nick, how's it going? Um, my name is Chance. I have sent you a couple of emails recently, um, but I just want to reach out and say that I appreciate what you're doing for the community, man, um, and that I also appreciate, you know, you just being on YouTube, man. You've helped me learn a lot, um, and you're one of the reasons that I'm staying off of uh, traditional tobacco cigarettes so that's awesome man i really appreciate that um it means a lot to me i also wanted to go ahead and point out this shirt which i thought you might appreciate um <laughs> i just finished watching one of the older vlogs where you and Dwayne tried the uh disco java which was the tire flavored juice which i thought was hilarious man um but I do want to just say thank you. I appreciate you for helping out the community and helping me out personally. That really means a lot, man. But yeah, let's go ahead and uh, keep on vaping. Yes, absolutely, bro. Thank you. Thank you so much for the kind words. I never really quite know what to say. Just... Thank you. I love doing YouTube. I love being here. And I'm really glad that you're digging what I'm doing, Chance. That is uh, definitely, definitely the coolest shirt. One of the coolest shirts I've ever seen. You cannot go wrong with Star Wars. Star Wars, preaching to the choir here. I'm uh, I'm a Star Wars super fanboy. So yeah, anyway, Chance, thank you so much for the kind words. You, sir, are definitely, definitely shouted out. And honestly, if anybody else has any other shout out type of videos that they would like to email over to me, to possibly be on this vlog here, you can send them on over, nick at grimgreen.com. Just attach a little video file. I think, you know, we most of us have smartphones now here in 2018, so just shoot a quick video. Uh, you know, landscape if you can, although although portrait is fine too. I get it, it's fine. <laughs> but landscape if you can, and uh, if you want to shout yourself out, shout anybody out, your shops, your family, your girlfriends, boyfriends, husbands, wives, I don't need to keep listing things. But honestly, any Anybody that you want to shout out, honestly, I even like hearing uh, quick stories, like quick stories of how you got into vaping, uh, you know, how much of a smoker you were before. I really like, I really like getting those types of stories. So yeah, you can send them on over to nick at grimgreen.com. I've got a bunch lined up. I've got a whole mess of those lined up, but I could always, always use some more. So yeah, just send them on over. So what I'm going to do right now before we jump over to the desk for news and advocacy is I just wanted to talk uh, real quickly about some stuff I've been vaping and my what I've been vaping hasn't been, uh, it, it hasn't been changing a whole lot. I'm getting to the point now where, look, I've been vaping for nine years and there's a few setups that I just want to have. Like I just want to have them and keep them set up. So this is kind of the process of me finding like just my favorite shit, like just setups that I, I just constantly want to have up and set up and not necessarily retire in any way, which is a difficult task to do because there's a lot of really fantastic 
really fantastic vape gear out there in the world. But anyway, this is, sorry, that was too long. This is just what I've been vaping recently. First things first, Me Pod, the Grim Green Me Pod. This is the one that from ECC because it still has the little lanyard attachment to it, although I'm not wearing it on a lanyard. But I will say that wearing your Me Pod on a lanyard at an event is uh, one of the one of the greatest things ever. I, w- I was using this at ECC, and there was many points throughout the whole weekend where I would just set my mod down like back behind the booth and then just vape my me pod because it was so much easier like carrying a camera or having a backpack and just having a dangly me pod at an event it's great this is loaded up with a salt nick juice from i i'm not 100 percent sure who this is from i originally thought it was from yami vapor the same people that did that portuguese egg tart juice as well as another one of their apple flavors that i'm vaping right now but i don't think it's the same company this just says ryu nick salt and this is a 50 milligram kiwi it looks like lychee like lychee and kiwi and it's quite delicious this is one of the few nicotine salts that i can really vape and it doesn't uh it doesn't disagree with me too much usually salt nicks really disagree with me and this one doesn't disagree with me too much i still find it sometimes a little bit too harsh i just find high nicotine salt nicks um, really harsh, very much more harsher than say like just a 50-50 PGVG like 18 or 12 milligram. Anyway, yeah, my Mi Pod kind of just is always around. It's always in my pocket. It's always on my desk. I, I take it around the house with me. And so this pod in it actually has that little airflow restrictor. If anybody out there has bought any of the newer Mi Pods or the Grim Green Edition Mi Pod, the, the pods come with this tiny, tiny, tiny little piece of plastic. And then you put that tiny, tiny little piece of plastic into the airflow of the pod and it tightens it up a little bit. It turns it from what is almost a restricted lung hit into something much more mouth to lungy manageable. It tightens it up a little bit and that's what I've been rocking and it's my favorite. I love it. Another entry into the mouth to lung category that I've been using like crazy. It's that Chroma A Zenith kit that I reviewed earlier this week. I just, was it this week? was last week, wasn't it? I kind of honestly just can't get enough of this little guy. It's so cool. It's so nice. It just fits in the palm of my hand. It's a rad little mod for mouth to lung and taken out. I have made a 30 mil bottle of 18 milligram Glacier Banana last me, I don't know, at least a month now. With mouth to lung stuff, you just don't blaze through juice like you do if you have like a sub ohm tank or a dripper. And I like it. This is a 1.6 ohm coil sitting at a whopping 13.5 watts just mouth to lung. It's so great. Oh yeah. I love it. I love it. I've also been rocking this Vicious Ant Spade quite heavily. Single, unregulated, 18650 Squonker. Original recipe recoil on top. DHD cap on top. Uh, Yig is on the inside. The Squonker has been great. It's been a really stellar squonker, but for some reason, I'm getting weird little particulates of juice just on one side of the bottle. And I clean off the bottle and I fill it up and I put it back in. And then at the end of my you know, session, at the end of the bottle, when my squonker needs refilling, I find little juice specks like little juice specks on just this weird side of the bottle and I have no idea where they're coming from. Other than that, I kind of like most everything about this mod. I hope to have a review for this spade um, very soon, very, very soon. But like I said, it's loaded up with Yig and it tastes delicious and I actually have a, uh, a really simple round wire build in here. This is just, this is the Ruby build. This is a seven wrap, 24 gauge anarchist wire around a two and a half millimeter, comes out to right around point to like 0.2.19 and this is one of those vapes like that Asmodus Lustro where you can take a real long slower sort of vape and and you just it's just uh it's just a very satisfying sort of relaxing vape for me
So good. Well, I guess I'm going in order. So I got another squonker. Got another squonker that I'm using here. This is one that I've been using just like crazy. I mean, daily banger since ECC. This is that Omboy. Omboy squonker. Um, this isn't the final version, so I'm not really going to... I try not to talk too much about it because I don't have the final version. This is one of the prototypes. He changed a bunch of things as well as like where his graphic is, how the bottle works. He changed a bunch of things on it, but... Dual parallel, I mean, dual parallel, what? Dual 18650 uh, regulated squonk. It's banging. I can't quite show you what's on top just yet, um, but we'll, we'll be able to talk about it real soon. Um, this is a banging vape. It's loaded up with that uh, Yami Vapor. This is the company that I thought did the salt mix. This is their Jet Jusu, Jusu, Gusu. I'm not really sure. It's uh, it's apples, and I almost taste like a little bit of clove in here, but it's really just a, a very solid, pure sort of pure apple flavor that I'm really into. Red apple flavor that I'm really into. But uh, here goes. Banging. God, I love this vape. I love this vape, and I can't wait to show you what's on top. Beautiful. Tastes great. Tastes great. This was a uh, this was a really surprising juice. I picked this up at ECC after tasting it, and I just thought it was a really great apple flavor. Sometimes I really just like very simple flavors. I've been vaping that Hooch Pure Banana that we're going to talk about in a second, and it's just banana. But it's a it's a it's a beautifully simple, great banana flavor. This is this is along those same lines. This is a really fantastic apple flavor. Like I said, I get a little bit of like a slight clovey sort of element in here as well, but overall it's just a it's just a really good apple flavor. Um, been hanging in there with this guy. That Ogvape V200 that we unboxed last week in the vlog, I've basically been using it every single day. And evidently, I was unaware. This is, uh, this is supposed to represent a, a Honda motor. I don't know the exact model because I'm not, a, I'm not a Honda guy. I'm not a car guy. So when I saw this, I didn't instantly go, oh, that's, a, that's definitely a Honda motor. But it is styled to look like a Honda motor. I like it because it feels pretty tactical and I like that. It feels really girthy. Girthy, okay. It feels really solid and substantial in my hand and I really like the button placement on it. I hope to have a review for this very soon just because I've been using it literally like crazy. Twisted Mess is 20 Pro Series on top. This is loaded up with <sighs> Smacks. It's that Pony on Acid Life. And I believe that they're going to be offering this online. I should double check before I say anything, but I think they're going to offer this online. This is the non-tobacco-free nicotine version. So there's there's regular, normal, free-based nicotine, which is, which is what the majority of people use in their e-liquids. Then there's salt nicotines, and then there's tobacco-free nicotine. It's a synthetic nicotine that's not derived from tobacco, and it has a different flavor to it and that tobacco free nicotine heavily affects the flavor profile of the liquid so i was vaping tobacco free nicotine pony on acid and it was great i mean it tasted like pony on acid and then when smacks reached out to me and said hey we're going to send you some non tfn stuff you know due to popular demand we're doing non tfn smacks line again and i tasted the non tfn pony on acid and it's 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 just so much better. Nicotine really does heavily affect the flavor profile. This is the Pony on Acid that I really, truly remember that gives me uh, sentimental feels about a lot of things, but I love it. This is my high wattage Kent vape. There's Aliens in here from MTurk, a 0.16. I had this set to, I had it set to 111 watts. For some reason it was down at 90 watts. Maybe I was wussing out a little bit, but I had this set at 111 watts. 0.16. It's just that. It's just that hot, hot, dense uh, Kent style vape. Uh, so warm, so flavorful, uh, so dense. That's just the way Kent likes to vape. And this is my Kent setup. I call this my Kent setup. And lastly, I've just suddenly rediscovered my love of tube mech mods. I I don't know what it is about them. I just love them. I vaped that way for so long that they have a very sentimental place in my heart. But this is the Ronin uh, Competition Mech mod. It's called the Ronin Competition mod. I'm not 100% sure if this particular model 
Uh, pardon me. I don't know why. I don't. Burps just appear. I don't know where they come from. They just appear sometimes. I don't know if this has like a model number. Like if this is the Ronin, uh, you know, Violator or something like that. It just says Ronin Competition Mod. It's a banging brass mech mod. Um, I honestly hope to re be reviewing this very soon because there's some cool stuff going on inside this mod that I am really a big fan of. Topped with the Gold Recoil Rebel RDA and Hooch Pure Banana. And let me tell you. Vaping Hooch Pure Banana in a glass dripper bottle with a mech, I think, is my absolute favorite way to vape. And I want to explain why. It's because I like holding it. I like carrying it, and it's much easier to drip from a glass dripper bottle into an RDA on a tube mech than it is with those, like, uh, 60 mil chubby gorillas or those 100 mil chubby gorilla bottles. I love glass bottles. I'm going to save this particular glass bottle and use it for other juices because I like this combo so much. It's so easy to use and handle and pocket. It's because I can hold it like this and I end up putting two fingers down here and I hold my bottle right here and you can just easily like boom look at this right here. Hi welcome to your bottle and I like the glass dripper because you can see how much juice is right there and decide right there by looking at your dropper how much juice you're going to put onto your coils. So I go yeah just bleh right through the middle, that looks good, down, just screw this down, there's no leaking, there's not that chubby gorilla juice volcano action happening, and you can just... It's so great. This is this is such a wonderful vape. These are the coils that M Turk built for me at ECC in the squad house uh, with my glasses on. No, no, no. This wasn't the glasses on. Although the glasses on is pretty funny. He tried to install some coils wearing my glasses. If you haven't checked it out, it's actually pretty funny. But these are the ones he did for me uh, the first night of ECC, I believe. It was like way after midnight, and Turk was like, "Yeah, let's just install some coils because why not?" And they've been great. They've been so great, and I love this mod. I love this whole setup. I love this glass dripper bottle. I, I want to bring glass dripper bottles back. And honestly, I would love to know your thoughts. I know that there's a lot of vapors that watch my videos now that weren't around when glass dripper bottles were the standard. Glass dripper bottles like this were the standard before 60 mil chubby gorillas or 100 mil chubby gorillas. And, and ever since then, I have mourned the loss of glass dripper bottles because I love them so much. And so I would love to get your thoughts. How do you guys feel about glass dripper bottles? Have you ever used a glass dripper bottle? Because I think they're just fantastic. Anyway, I'm going to get off my glass dripper bottle soapbox right now, but I will say this has been my, uh, this has basically been my daily carry. This goes with me everywhere. In fact, I got into a rhythm of vaping a single 18650 with one on the charger, and then when this one is down in its life, I'll just swap it for the one that's on the charger, and then when that one's down on its life, I'll swap it for the one that's on the charger. So I've been using two batteries, just back and forth, charger, mod, charger, mod, charger, mod, works great, at least for being at home, you know, in working at home and being in an in-home environment, that works uh, just spectacularly. Damn. Damn, damn good vape. Anyway, that's what I've been vaping. So what I want to do right now is I want to get back over to the desk. It is time to do some news and advocacy. News and advocacy, yeah. So we're here to talk about some news and advocacy. And I have a little bit of self-serving self -serving news at first. Um, uh, uh, merch, Grim Green merch, the same merch that I had at ECC, as well as the Grim Green Me Pods, they're all on recoilrda.com. I think we're running low on a bunch of the t-shirts. Uh, I'm going to be making a new order for t-shirts soon in some bigger sizes. We're, we need extra large. We need double extra large. Um, we need bigger sizes, as well as those Grim Green snap backs. It's all on recoilrda.com. Me Pods as well. Did I mention the Me Pods? Sorry. It's all on recoilrda.com, and that's where Dwayne's Squonker is also going to be be uh, sold is on recoilrda.com. So all, all that stuff is over there. And like I said, I'm just I'm just waiting on on a merch refresh to happen. But all that stuff is over there. Um, I, I'm also going to be at uh, Vape Jam UK. Vape Jam UK in April. Um, I, the, look, so here's where we're going to talk about scheduling and stuff like that <laughs> because I know it's I know it's everyone's favorite topic. <laughs> this is mostly just useless information. But my video schedule from about the end of March. 
through about the end of April is going to be all weird and messed up. At the end of March, we're going out to New Jersey to visit Casey Pickle's family. And then right from there, from Jersey, I'm flying to Vape Jam UK and I'll be gone from there. To, I'll be gone in the UK until the 10th of April. And then here you go. This is a Grim Green News Vlog exclusive. At the end of April, I am moving again. I know, I know, I know. I kind of just got this office set up exactly the way that I wanted it. I love shooting video in here. Got my office all set up the way I wanted it and, and we're moving again. And that's okay because when you're a team, that you, you make these big decisions together. Casey's job is taking her to the great city of Los Angeles, California. So that's where we're moving at the end of April is up to LA. We, we don't have a place we haven't even looked at places yet, but just as a heads up, in April, towards the end of April, I'm going to be moving. I'm going to have a completely new office, and that move, as well as the travel, is definitely going to interfere with my video schedule. I, I will do my best to crank out as many reviews as I can, and I will do my absolute best to make sure that there is uh, content on YouTube, whether that be vlogs or like a moving day vlog, stuff like that. I just want to make sure that I have a lot of content up and I want to make sure that we can get back into the groove of this vlog as quickly as possible. When I moved into this place, I, I attempted to have zero interruptions, which I actually think I pulled off. I don't think I missed a single video while moving into this place, but this was a San Diego to San Diego move. This is a much bigger move that we're about to do up to LA. So Shout out to all my LA vapors. I'm going to be joining you up there in the great city of Los Angeles, California, and I'm actually pretty excited about it. So that's going to be happening at the end of April, maybe bleeding over into the beginning of May. It, it's, it's, look, moving is a lot of work and moving is a lot more work as an adult. When I was a youngin and I was like 20, 22 years old, 25 years old, yeah, dude, I just move. You just pick up and move. You're like, I'm going to move uh, to Carson City. I'm going to get a dope apartment there. Easy. And it's easy because you don't have a lot of shit. And now, unfortunately, I have a lot of shit. I've got a lot of adult stuff that I need to move. And so moving, it's a big struggle. It's going to take a lot of my attention. But with that said, I do hope to have some regular, regular content out here on the interwebs. So let's talk about news. Let's talk about some actual news that's going on. A fellow named Mike sent me over a pretty great video. And this basically this whole news segment is going to be subtitled, Meanwhile in the UK, because a lot of this news is some UK news and the way that the UK is treating vaping and e-cigs and tobacco harm reduction is just a, a stark contrast to the demonization that is happening to it in the United States and a few other uh, parts of the world, but a fellow named Mike sent me over this great video. This video is is long. This video is two hours long, but there's a great little timestamp where you can hear from Lynn Dawkins, who's a professor of uh, addiction in the UK. I don't remember exactly what university or school, but she's a professor of addiction, uh, addiction behavioral studies. At about an hour and 23 minutes in, you get to hear her argument and basically what this whole video is. It's the full coverage of the United Kingdom Science and Technology Committee inquiry into e-cigarettes. This is the second oral evidence session where uh, people, lawmakers and people from the industry and scientists all sit and give their testimony, their oral evidence for the use of vapor products and electronic cigarettes in front of the UK Science and Technology Committee. There's a lot of people in this. There's a lot of talking. I mean, if, if you guys can sit through like an hour and a half long Grim Green vlog, I have a little bit of confidence that you might be able to sit through two hours of like like tedious oral evidence testimony in front of the Science and Technology Committee. It's all rather interesting. This is something that I kind of just put on in the background as I was answering emails one day, and there's just a there's just a lot of good information on here. And the and the the, the evidence presented from uh, Lynn Dawkins is especially good. It's time stamped in the video. So what I'm going to do is post a link down in the description to where you can watch this video. It's long. It's not. This isn't a you know a 2018 
bite-sized, digestible-sized, you know, piece of information. This is like, you, you got to earn this information, bro. You got to sit and listen for two hours to all of this evidence testimony. But with that said, it, there is a lot of great information in here. So thank you, Mike, for sending this over. I'm going to post a link down in the description to where you can check out that video. A fellow named Simon also sent me other, over another YouTube video that I thought was just great. I thought this was just a great video. Zample Box has a YouTube. I had no idea. They have 70,000 subscribers. I didn't know that Zample Box had a YouTube, but one of the videos that they put on their YouTube, and it seems like it seems like what Zample Box is trying to do is make viral videos. And you can't make, you can't manufacture viral videos. But with that said, this does have 150,000 views. So a lot of people have seen it. But what the video is, grandpa's vape for the first time. So basically what they did is they got these two old guys, you know, two, two grandpas, like really stereotypical like grandpa type of people. And these two gentlemen, they, they talk about when they started smoking, their, small, their whole smoking history, and then they try vapor products. And it's really entertaining. It's really entertaining and it's actually pretty, pretty thought provoking. I feel like this is a thing that we could, uh, could kind of share around. You know, ex-smokers, uh, these two, you know, older grandpa type of guys trying vaping for the first time. It's, uh, it's fun. It's a fun, fun, interesting video. Video. So thank you, Simon, for sending that over. And I will put links to hopefully everything that I talk about. I know sometimes I miss things here and there, but I'm going to put links to basically everything I talk about in the description to this video so you don't miss anything any of it. So continuing this segment of meanwhile in the UK, uh, I ran across this article, Sam, a fellow named Sam sent me over this article from independent.co.uk. And the big headline on it is NHS hospitals should sell e-cigarettes, says government agency. What's happening in the UK right now is something that I really never thought would happen, but there is a bigger push uh, to, 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 to e-cigarettes, to vaping than I have ever seen before. In fact, there's a lot of groups of doctors that are uh, doctors and the public, but there's a lot of groups of people that are actually pushing back against the TPD, saying things like they're, they're arbitrary rules, they're superfluous rules, thing like, things like the two mil tank capacity, things like the, the nicotine limit, things like the bottle size, they feel are, are too, are, they're too intrusive. They are too intrusive of rules on vaping because the UK wants as many people vaping as possible. They have billboards, they have uh, bus stop signs that say switching to vaping right now, you know, greatly reduces your risk of things like cardiovascular disease and heart disease and, uh, and lung cancer and things like this. The UK is really on board and behind vaping. And it's such a wonderful thing to see. And it's such a, a stark contrast, like I said earlier, is to think the things that are happening in the United States right now. In the United States, I've never seen vaping become more demonized than it is right now. My hope level over the last couple years was really high. And my hope level in 2018 is it's dwindling, okay? I'm not saying it's gone, I'm just saying it's dwindling. And when it's dwindling, all that means is that we need to fight more. We need to get public opinion on our side. But I digress right now. I'm not gonna go into a what we need to do in the United States sort of soapbox because I wanted to focus on this article from the UK. But the big headline, NHS hospitals should sell e-cigarettes, says government agency. So the NHS is the National Health Service in uh, in England. And the article starts off and it says, hospitals should stock e-cigarettes for sale to patients and permit vaping in private rooms as part of the NHS smoke-free efforts. That sentence alone just blows my mind. If I had seen something like this in the United States, could you imagine like the New York Times or the Wall Street Journal saying hospitals should stock e-cigarettes to sale for patients and permit vaping in private rooms as part of the FDA smoke-free efforts? Could, could you... Could you even imagine reading something like that in the United States? That That's where I want the United States to get on vaping. Now, uh, this article is long and I'm not going to read the whole thing, but it does go on to say the call comes from Public Health England as part of an evidence update on the safety of tobacco alternatives, which it says should be used more widely as quitting aids. Meanwhile, government officials should help manufacturers license e-cigarettes as medical quitting aids. Such a, mu such a move would allow GPs to prescribe 
prescribe the devices to their patients who are trying to stop smoking. Great, fit, wonderful. Fantastic. The UK and vaping. I, I was talking to uh, to Dean. Oh, here's a little bit of side news. I was on the uh, Dean Vaping Biker live stream show this last Monday, and uh, I'll put a link to it down in the description. And I was also on Sir Vaping A Lot's channel. He's another UK guy reviewer doing some live streams. I was on his live stream as, sh as uh, his live stream show as well uh, with Demetrius from uh, you know uh, VTA Nashville you know, the, the Tennessee Smoke Free Association, him and P Bissardo doing those uh, Inakin stuff like that. Dimitri's a great guy, and I got to talk to him and Sir Vapes a lot. Uh, great streams, and I will throw a link down in the description to those. But I was talking to Dean after we did the live stream. We hung out for, I don't know, a half hour maybe, just, just talking about vape stuff and, and business stuff and youtube -y stuff. And I was telling him, it seems like the UK right now is just, is just paradise for vapors. Just paradise. The country is embracing vaping. They are encouraging people to switch over to vaping. They have very reasonable, although a slightly arbitrary rules around vaping and what you can do and what you can, you know, uh, the TPD and things like this. But otherwise, those arbitrary rules aside, you still have safe and legal access to a multitude, multitude of vaping products over there and it's unbelievable and i'll just say this one last time the contrast the stark contrast between the uk and the united states literally blows my mind. So like I said, I'm not going to read this whole article, but I am going to post a link to it down in the description of this video where you can check it out and read it. It's a great article from top to bottom, but I did want to read this one part. It says Martin Dockrell, tobacco control lead for Public Health England said, we are saying no smoking anywhere on the grounds of hospitals, no smoking in the smoking shelter. That shelter now becomes a vaping shelter. There are two parts to being a smoke-free hospital. One is not allowing smoking on the premises and the other is helping every smoker to quit. Some hospitals will decide, especially with their longer-term patients or patients who don't have a choice whether they are there or not, where it will be appropriate to have spaces indoors spaces indoors where vaping is permitted. This is the National Health Society and Public Health England pushing the government to change the rules around vaping so that hospitals can allow vaping inside the hospital. That to me just speaks volumes, volumes again about how different it is in the UK. Why is the UK so different than the United States? And I, I do not want to turn this into a political debate in any capacity, but I believe it's because the UK has socialized medicine. The country, the government, pays for the health care. So it's in their best, best interests, both on a social level to have healthy people that aren't smoking, but on a fiscal level, having less people suffering from things like COPD, heart disease, cardiovascular disease, and lung cancer, those things are just not happening. The less of that you have happening, of course, that's in the best interests of the government. That means they're spending less money on sick people. Unfortunately, in the United States, where healthcare is a business, healthy people aren't making money for big pharma. Healthy people are not making money for hospitals. Healthy people are not a, a profit. Sick people are a profit in the United States, and I, I, I think I think that's uh, I think that's where this is coming from, truly and honestly. And like I said, I don't want to turn this into a political debate, but it's pretty cut and dry. It's pretty black and white as to what's happening in the difference between the UK and the United States. And I would love, I would love to get your thoughts down in the comments below. And this is something that I would like to come back to next week and just go through what, how you guys feel about this subject. What do you think about this subject? Why is there such a difference between the way vaping is treated in the UK and the way that vaping is treated in the United States? I think it comes down to universal health care. Like I said before, I think it's in the best interests of the UK because they have socialized medicine to keep their citizens healthy and not smoking. And in the United States, smoking unhealthy people 
are what make money. And this isn't, uh, you know, I realize that sounds very, uh, that sounds very anti-capitalist and it's not. I, I am a capitalist. I am a constitutionalist. I, I absolutely believe in the constitution and I absolutely believe in capitalism. It's still a very, very interesting discussion to have, especially as it relates to vaping. Anyway, good stuff, good stuff. So like I said, I'm gonna post some links down in the description to hopefully everything I talked about, including uh, I'm gonna post some links to uh, like the NHS website, the Public Health England Royal College of Physicians report, as well as like the RCP and NHS Twitter accounts. And as always, in the description of this video is a link to CASA.org. If you wanna get involved in any advocacy that's happening here in the United States, go over to CASA, sign up, it's free. They email you, calls to action when things are happening in your state. A lot of what's happening in the United States right now, besides the, you know, speculation with Scott Gottlieb and flavors and the FDA is actual state and local government stuff is going on as well. There's a lot of age restrictions going on. They want to raise the age to 21 in a lot of states. And I know for sure in San Francisco, there is a huge, huge flavor ban going on. And I'm going to post a link down in the description where you can get more information about that Northern California. California, San Francisco flavor ban. You can head over to letsberealsf.com, get involved. It's on the ballot for this summer, for this June, I believe. It's this June or July that it's up, that it's on the ballot for a flavor ban in San Francisco. And meanwhile, in the UK, Public Health England and the NHS are putting pressure on hospitals to have indoor vaping areas. <gasps> unbelievable. Just unbelievable. But anyway, yeah, that's what I got. That's all That's all we got. I think that's all we got for news and advocacy this week. Let me double check my notes real fast. So yes, I think that's all we have for news and advocacy this week. So what we're going to do right now is get in a time machine and we're going to go. I'm going to sneeze. I'm going to sneeze. <laughs> Okay. And my cold finally appears to be uh, gone. I, I have a slight, slight little, like a, just a, a little bit of like a sort of sniffle thing going on and I just sneezed. But otherwise, I, I, think, I, I think I'm free and clear out of the cold zone. But anyway, what we're gonna do right now is go upstairs because I would like to taste a beer. Well, we are here back in my kitchen to taste some beer. I apologize, I don't have any atmosphere squash, atmosphere limes. There's, uh, uh, oh yeah, there you go. Atmosphere popcorn kernels. Anyway, the beer we're gonna be tasting today is something I bought a while ago and I just haven't got around to drinking yet. This is Quack from Belgium. This is a beer that is kind of all over Belgium. It's readily available in Belgium. And the time I spent in Belgium, this Quack beer was kind of everywhere. And I actually don't even know if I'm saying that correctly. Quack? I think that's how Diego said it. I think he actually said Quack beer. Uh, I had it while I was there. Quite a delicious beer. It's a little bit difficult to find in the United States. You can easily go to like a big alcohol retailer, something like BevMo, something like Total Wine, and their chances are very high that they're gonna have this particular beer. And it's been a while since I've had a beer with a cork in it. And uh, you know, you know me, uh, I'm not super excited about this, but here we go. And I know everybody always gives me like advice, like, no, Nick, you twist the bottle down or you do this and you do other things. Like I just open it the way I open it, even though it scares me, I'm gonna try to do it. Jabo somehow did it. Jabo did it somehow with a champagne glass at ECC and made it like basically silent. Oh, this one's really in there, dude. Oh my God, wow. Um, my, uh, my heart is actually racing right now. That's crazy. I thought this cork would be a lot bigger. I wasn't expecting a tiny little cork, but it's whatever. What are you going to do? I'm going to be pouring this into a Grim Army branded tulip style glass. Oh yeah, it's pouring a little dark. It's a little bit darker than I remember. When I was in Belgium, I had this beer and for some reason I don't remember it being this exact color, but that's fine. It's cool. This is a great color for beer. Uh, nice little head on top. This is described as a Belgian strong ale, which Look, I love Belgian beers. I like I like this beer. I know I like this beer, but it's been 
well, shit, when was I in Belgium? It's been a while. It's been well over a year. I mean, maybe a year and a half, maybe a year and a half and some change on the end there. And I only brought, uh, for some reason, the two vapes that I grabbed to bring up here to taste with this juice pairing are both banana flavors. So, ah, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. But anyway, cheers. Here's to you guys. I'm, I haven't had any yet. Yeah. Oh, it's good. It's so good. It's a delightfully smooth beer. I get a very nice full mouthfeel from it. I get some, uh, I don't know, there's, there's some fruity notes going on in here. There's not really that strong uh, Belgian citrus kind of happening in here. It's more of like fruity notes, maybe some low notes, like some, some, some caramely sort of low notes in there as well. God, this is a delicious beer. I, I can't believe I waited this long to drink it. Oh, holy crap. Okay, what alcohol are you? 8.4. Okay, cool. So, yeah, I might pump the brakes on the quack after, eh, let's call it two, right? Yeah, it's just a beautiful all-around beer. It, it, it's quite delicious. It has a little bit of, uh, you can taste a little bit of the alcohol in it. It reminds me of a beer that I reference quite a bit from Firestone, the Sticky Monkey. The Sticky Monkey has a real high ABV, very high ABV, and they can't, they don't do a very good job of masking it. And in Sticky Monkey, it's it's a delicious beer. It's probably my favorite beer of all time. And I actually, I have one bottle of 2016 Sticky Monkey that Casey Pickle bought for me that we're probably gonna wait, I mean, at least another year before we open. Traditional Belgium Special Ale. You don't see a lot of this beer around. When you think of, of Belgian beers, there's a certain, you know, there's a certain number, <coughs> pardon me, of Belgian, I don't know why I did that. I could, I'm gonna edit that one out, unless I don't. <coughs> But there's, I was gonna say, there's, there's Belgian beers that people think of when they think of Belgium and Belgian beers. Quack is not one of them. Before I went to Belgium, uh, Belgian? Before I went to Belgium, uh, I had not heard of this beer and I had not tried this beer, but I'm really glad I did. It's delicious. This is a beer that I highly, highly recommend. If you're a beer drinker and you're even a little bit fond of like Belgian style strong ales, this Quack, great, highly recommend it. It's, it's a beautiful beer. So the two things I brought up here to do a pairing with, uh, Wake Mod Co. Little Kit, Little, Little Kit, Little Foot Kit. This is loaded up with that uh, Bonanza. And actually a little bit later in the vlog, we're gonna be tasting another juice from Culinary Confections, but we'll get there when we get there. Right now, this is Bonanza. It's a banana walnut flavor, so, I don't know. Let's just let's just see how it goes. Oh, that's good. Well, that's great. That that is completely delicious pairing. The banana and the walnuts of this really complement the flavors of this beer really well. <laughs> I actually have no idea. Let's see what Beer Advocate has to say about it. Quack, it is a 3.7 out of five, meaning it is a very good beer. Uh, oh yeah, I, I would agree with this. The, the taste is a little spicy, has a great caramel flavor to it. The mouthfeel is pretty light, but it had enough body to be flavorful and pleasing. Yeah, it does have a good body. Overall, this beer has some ele elements of a Belgian quad. I really enjoy the flavor and the look of the brew. The, this is great, coil turd. Very cool beer. <laughs> Very cool. This is actually a great little pairing. I wanna try it again, but I wanna try the other one. I brought up Hooch Pure Banana, and I don't think that one's gonna be as good because this Bonanza has that bakery type of uh, walnut component to it as well, and I think that, more than the banana, is what's complementing this particular beer. Good. Wow, that's good. This is just a good beer. Honestly, this is just a good beer even if you're not doing a beer pairing with it. But what the heck, let's give Hooch Pure Banana a try. Oh, okay. Maybe it, is, maybe it is a little bit of the banana flavor. I think the, I think the Culinary Confections Bonanza 
is a much better pairing with this. But honestly, this Hooch Pure Banana and the Quack, awesome. It, it, that, it's a good pairing. It's not as good, but it's still a very good, why do I say that? We're gonna talk about this later, you guys. It's a very, very good pairing. Anyway, good. I'm just gonna top myself off here, no big deal. Oh, this is a good one. This is a great beer, and I'm excited that I have a little bit more left for tonight. So yeah, that's what we got for a beer pairing today. I hope everyone uh, has a beer, has a beverage in front of them because we got a long vlog ahead of us. What we're gonna do right now is we're gonna jump back in our time machine. We're gonna go back downstairs and it is time to open just a whole mess of vape mail. <laughs> okay. <laughs> This is too much. This is too much. We're about to do some vape mail. This is too much. I have too much vape mail. Chinese New Year ended and then and then the vape mail just picked all up again. In fact, I think some of this might not even be vape mail. You see, I, I discovered eBay recently. I have a little bit of a confession to make. I've never used eBay. I've never sold things on eBay. I've never purchased things on eBay, but I recently discovered eBay and the and the iPhone, you know, eBay app. So I've been on there. I've been on there bidding on things. I'm trying to find some classic toys for my office, things like that. So I have a feeling that some of these are from eBay, but uh, I'm not 100% sure. So we're just going to dive in. We're just gonna, you guys, the, the pile, the pile in front of me, it's obscene. I should take a picture of it. It's obscene. But we're not going to get through it by talking, so let's just dive in. What? Uh, it says, uh, got a note here that says, hey, Nick, uh, hope you enjoy the snowman. I know very few people that would appreciate this, that would probably appreciate what it is. I happened by a snow girl mod while I was back, but they only had one left. Actually, I had no idea if it actually works or not, but it looks good on my shelf. As a longtime Star Wars fan myself, I remember writing in, I remember waiting in line in the theater in 77, and my 12-year-old mind was never quite the same again. My favorite character has always been R2-D2, no idea why. It's because, here's why we love R2-D2. I'm gonna explain real quick why we love R2-D2. R2-D2, is awesome. That's why we like him. There's no other rhyme or reason. R2-D2 is just fucking cool. And if you want to get real deep into it, I think R2-D2 kind of uh, represents... Uh, R2-D2 is kind of a different droid. Uh, Luke Skywalker says in A New Hope, I've never seen such dedication in a droid before. I think R2-D2 is a different type of droid. I feel like he's maybe a little more sentient than a lot of other droids. And I think, you know, if we're getting on like a metaphysical level, I think R2-D2 ultimately is Luke Skywalker's, I don't want to say conscience, but more like his his heart. Anyway, I, I get it. R2-D2 is R2-D2 is awesome. I think I have damn near every release of the trilogy, including the original release on Laserdisc before any of the special editions. Yeah, that's the way to go. Anyway, thank for all you do for the vaping community. Continued effort to save lives. Keep up the great work on the videos and the podcast. I enjoy them all. Always entertaining. If you're ever up in the Yosemite area, give me a yell. I'll buy you a beer. <laughs> have a vape and we can bitch about the prequels. Ed. Fuck yeah, Ed. That's what we're going to do. And I don't know if he included it in here. I didn't even know this was still around. He put, he we just put a little picture of the bottle of Strom and Head. It's just a juice name that really makes me laugh so hard. Strom and Head. It's a juice that uh, it's a juice that Ruby Roo used to vape back in the day, and I never got to try it. Actually, I think I know what this is. Okay, so there's no Strom and Head inside of this. Oh yeah, this is the Snowman. So this was. This was weird. I don't know the whole story behind this particular mod, but if anybody remembers a long time ago, I had the Castigador. Does anybody remember the Castigador mod? I loved it. I worshipped the Castigador mod. Like, you can't imagine I worshipped this mod, but I killed it. I broke it. I tried to clean the contacts in there. Something got all fucked up and it damn near hard shorted one of my batteries. And ever since then, it's just been broken and sitting in a box and it really bums me out. This is from the same company, from a different company, but this was called the Snowman. And it was basically a Castigador. I mean, it's got the same 
door on the bottom, the same springs, the same chambers, it's got the same contacts up there, and all this is is a dual parallel unregulated box mod, but it's a wonderful size, and it's, it's, it's aluminum and Delrin, white Delrin on there, and there's this weird little stormtrooper looking guy on it, and it's, it's not quite a stormtrooper, but it's kind of a stormtrooper, it looks like a Funko stormtrooper, which leads me to believe that this was a Chinese made mod? I don't know. Does anybody know the history of the snowman? If you know more about this mod than I do, which chances are clearly very good of that, but if anybody knows more about this mod than I do, let me know down in the description. Where did this mod come from? He, uh, he, the story is uh, Ed was at a vape shop and they had a couple of these and they were on sale and he bought multiples of them and had a spare that he really wanted to send me. And I said, bro, I love you. Yes, I will vape that snowman, mostly because I miss my Castigador so much, but because it's a snowman. It's kind of a weird off-brand quirky thing in my view because I don't know where it came from but Ed seriously thank you thank you for the snowman this is not going back in the box that's out that's going to get set up very soon yeah thank you for purchasing our snowman box happy vaping Face facebook.com slash vapor ijoy visit our website ijoy.cn but it's not ijoy it's ijoy with an e on the end dot cn so it's a different iJoy Company. Oh, there's so much mystery to unravel around this box mod. But Ed, seriously, bro, thank you. That's awesome. Awesome. Uh, thank you. And this is the Bit Box. The Bit Box. No idea. Famovape. Famovape.com. It's a 218 watt. Looks like acrylic. Looks like resin. Maybe it looks like a resin, re resin box mod. Oh, and that Yup RDA. Okay, eh, okay. I wasn't, uh, I, I know who this is from and I wasn't, here, I'm gonna take this out of here. And I wasn't sure about this Yup RDA. They sent me some pictures of it, some pictures of the deck and to me, now, no offense to anybody that designed this Fumo Vapor, anything like that, but to me, the Yup RDA is a very, very, very like, copy my homework, but don't make it look like you copied my homework type of atomizer in comparison it, comparison it? No. Comparing it to something like the dead rabbit. So we'll just have a look, see here. See, this is the black one and it's got like a peace symbol on it. 810 compatible. It's even knurled along the top and it's got really high set up airflow that is angled down. It's got those angular, you know, cuts on the side of the top cap here, very much like that dead rabbit RDA that we all know and love so much. And wait till you take a look at the deck. That deck right there, it looks like they took the dead rabbit deck and then bent it up a little bit. And uh, I'm not sure why. I don't know what the advantage of that is. It's got no juice well, just like the dead rabbit, the top cap becomes your juice well, but it's got, it's very similar. It's like they took everything from the dead rabbit and then just tweaked it just a little bit like, oh, let's take the dead rabbit deck and just bend these up. And then we'll have a real shallow juice well, just like the dead rabbit. We'll have two O-rings on the bottom. It's kind of just like the dead rabbit. And then we'll set our airflow up real high, but you know, just like the dead rabbit, but it's going to be holes instead of a slot, but we're still going to have, you know, uh, angled in airflow from the top, just like the dead rabbit. It's going to be knurled along the top, kind of like the dead rabbit. And it's going to be 810 compatible and come with an acrylic drip tip, you know, just kind of like the dead rabbit. So that's the vibe that I kind of got the very first time I saw this Yup RDA, but I don't know. You never know. I mean, everybody copies everybody. Nobody has any original ideas anymore, but this is a little bit like, hey, the Dead Rabbit's a really popular RDA. Maybe there's a way we can get in on that. But like with all of my uh, unboxings here in the Vape Mail segment, if there's something that I want to set up, then I'm going to do that. And I don't know, maybe the Yup RDA could be a thing. I mean, I'm getting ahead of myself because there's a lot of packages here, but I do real quickly want to look at this. Uh, I want to look at this bit box real fast. This is a green one and whoa, that is stupid. What the shit? Okay. Um, maybe it's got a great screen and this is for this size. It's still only a dual 18650. This thing is a monster. Yeah. Love that. I love it. I love it when my battery door does that. Just 
kind of twists all over the place. That's always a sign of high quality. Uh, it's this sort of like uh, brushed aluminum. Looks to be uh, acrylic with this really lightly, uh, you know, s very silvery anodized aluminum on there. Here, let's uh, let's get a little closer. There you can see it's like bright, bright. You can see it's that light gray, that very light gray anodized aluminum. Acrylic, not acrylic, uh, resin all the way around. The whole body is resin. There's a protruding clicky button right here. One, two, three, four, five. Let's take a look at that screen. Okay, there's a clock. How does the screen look though? Ah, that's what the screen looks like. Okay, so that's, I mean, that's kind of a pretty display. Like it looks nice and sharp and vivid. This button is real weird. It's real mushy all over. Like I can mush it around and then if you press it real hard, it'll click. But if you just press this button like this, it's just mushy and doesn't fire. But then if you grab it and click it down, then it'll click. Weird, 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 weird. And this is only dual 18650s and it's still big. This is far bigger than even that, uh, you know, uh, the Cylon, the Smoant Cylon, much bigger than that. By comparison, here's another dual 18650 regulated box and it's like, half the size. This is a tiny little box, almost the same damn size vertically as it is as it is to this one horizontally. That's crazy. Well, there you go. The bit box. I'm sorry. You, I have so much mail here, you guys, and I keep doing little show and tells for every product. I'm going to, I'm going to try to move this along a little bit. That twisted mess is vape though. We got to keep it a little bit foggy in here, right? Let's do some DHL, shall we? Review questionnaire form. What is the name of the device? Vapefly Galaxies, mouth to lung, RDA. That's all I need to know. I'm excited about this. In the past, I haven't been a huge fan of Vapefly. I didn't really enjoy any of the products they released. I didn't like that mesh RDA at all. A whole mess of coils, six piece. See, this is, this is, this is China using weird terminology. Quad coil. <laughs> okay, what's a quad coil? What is a mixed twisted coil? And then they have the infamous hive coil. Has anybody used a hive coil and really like super fallen in love with it? And I mean, I'm not judging. It, it could be, it could very well be a great coil. I've just never heard of the hive coil. I've never seen any builders on Instagram using the hive coil technique. What the shit is going on here? This is the ugliest coil like I've ever seen. The hive coil looks like twisted wire that was twisted together. So they had two strands of twisted wire and then twisted that wire together. It just looks like a train wreck. Well, anyway, coils. Yeah, this is the Vapefly Galaxies mouth to lung RDA. This is something that I definitely want to look at right away. This is something I might set up right away. Apart from being on a huge mech mod kick lately, I've also been on an intense mouth to lung kick lately. So much good mouth to lung stuff out there right now. And uh, this is hopefully going to be another entry. There's not a lot of mouth to lung RDAs. There's the Berserker from Vandy Vape out there. It's a mouth to lung RDA that I'm hoping is in one of these boxes. For the most part, it's mouth to lung tanks. Yeah, look at this, that little RDA. There's airflow. There's three different airflow settings. It's kind of a cool looking RDA. It's got that like, you know, that frozen piss sort of uh, Ultem drip tip on there. That is a very open, open, open mouth to lung. Mouth to lung. That might even be too open for me. Where's a mod? I need a mod for this. Let's just use the snowman. Okay. 510 drip tip. Oh God, a screw fell out. Two screws fell out. Why would they do that? Mother fuck. Two tiny little screws just fell out of here. So it's a, it's a single coil guy, uh, dual coil guy. I think it's a single coil guy. Although there's two post holes in each side of the posts. This is just confusing me. So this is the deck and you can see the screws that fell out. There's a positive side and a negative side. It looks like you would just put a single coil right through the middle there, right? I mean, I'm not crazy, but why is there two screws on both the positive and the negative. You can't, you can't put a dual coil in there. There's a tiny little atomizer. You can't fit two coils in that small of a space. I think it's a single coil banger guy. And then you have this AFC right here. And those are your AFC settings, small, medium, and large, I guess. And even with the small, it is, uh, it's quite open for a mouth to lung, but 
this is kind of something I want to set up today. I am very into the idea of a mouth to lung RDA. So this vape fly galaxies, it might just be get set up today. And, and it also came with a blue, what I believe to be blue Ultim. I don't know if that's a thing, regular Ultim top cap, and then an even somehow more piss colored Ultum. This looks more like a healthy pee. Like you don't drink like monster energy drinks all the time. You drink maybe a little bit more water. That That's this color of pee. Oh, it's so gross. That's gross. I, I hate those colors. I hate those colors and I don't know why Ultum exists. Oh yeah. And here we have the Berserker Mouth to Lung RDA. We got two Mouth to Lung RDAs in one vlog video and I don't really want to set both of them up. And see, this is the one that Dean was telling me about that he really really liked. Oh, that's interesting. Mouth to lung. Okay, there's a lot of airflow options. There's an Ultim drip tip. And this is the one that actually comes with beauty rings as well. So it doesn't look so like weird and offensively tall on atomizers or on box mods. Beauty rings included. Wow, even like a big 25 millimeter beauty ring on there. All right, well, vape fly, I think you might be getting bypassed so that I can set up the Vandy Vape Berserker mouth to lung RDA. I'm not a huge fan of in fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to post a picture of this on Instagram and I'm just going to have a poll. I'm going to have a poll. We'll let Instagram decide which one I set up. So yeah, we're just going to let Instagram decide which one I set up and hopefully I get an answer by the end of this, but we got, we got more. We got more mail. Oh, this is a pod. This is another pod system and a USB, USB stick so this is a pod system where did this come from the council of vapor vape smart vape iq.com pod system oh oh shit that's actually kind of a really cool looking pod it's a very cool battery it's got like this black brushed stainless steel on it okay cool well pod systems are nice and easy to set up so i'll probably just set this up as well blueberry blueberry tobacco menthol tobacco and strawberry blueberry i have not seen blueberry in a pod vape yet so that's the one we're gonna use yeah should just very simple very straightforward cool vape smart vape iq pod system we're gonna vape that in just a second and i think this is actually my my eBay purchase because it does not look like vape mail. Packing peanuts. Oh, I know what this is. Besides a lot of packing peanuts. Ah. Holy crap, this is so cool. So what this is is a vintage 1970s Klingon Mego Star Trek action figure and I really liked this toy. I was going for this. I wanted a Spock and I wanted a Klingon. And so far, the only one I can get, the easier one to get, the one that's not insanely priced. And, you know, you get into these bidding wars on eBay and the price just goes and you go, okay, not going to pay $900 for a Spock. Sorry. This one I was able to get for much, much cheaper, and it's in one of those uh, acrylic cases. This is an original mint on card, unpunched, mego, Klingon, cool. It's so cool. It's so cool. I'm a huge Star Trek fan. I've been watching Star Trek Discovery recently, and here's what I find weird about Star Trek Discovery while we're on the subject. No, I can't. I'm sorry. This can't run that long. We'll talk about Star Trek later, but I've got a Klingon Star Trek original 70s mego uh, figure in the package. I'm excited. I don't know where to put this, but it's going to go. It's going to go somewhere. It's going to go somewhere and it's going to be awesome. And it's right there. No, no, we're, we're still not done. We've, we've got a ways to go here. This is an RDA from Ogvape called the Templar RDA. Yeah, uh, it looks like an RDA. It's got kind of an interesting uh, little deck system in there. Interesting airflow and AFC as well. I don't know if this is 810 on top or not. Looks to be 810 on top. Yeah, there you go. Ogvape, the Templar RDA. Oh, the airflow is actually quite nice and quite smooth on there. This is something, uh, this is something I'm actually excited about trying. Did I buy a large battery case off of Amazon? I didn't buy this. Where did this come from? Did someone buy me a large battery case from Amazon? Do I have really that bad of a memory that I don't remember buying a large battery case from Amazon? Yeah, apparently this is a big waterproof battery case from Amazon. And I don't know where it came from. I did not order this, but it's got my name on it. Custom Lights Inc. Is this not from Amazon? It had an Amazon receipt in it. Amazon Marketplace receipt. Okay. Uh... 
Andrew from Custom Lights sent me this. Andrew, 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 did Andrew, did you buy me a battery case from Amazon? I think, I think Andrew bought me a battery case from Amazon and I'm gonna have to hit up Andrew. Here's the thing, Andrew, hit me up. <laughs> Let me know if this was you. Not that I don't appreciate it, I'm just very confused as to where this came from. My memory is, uh, is kind of just the worst on earth, but this looks like a battery case. It's got foam on the inside. Does it hold batteries? Like, can I put some 21700s in here? Yeah, holy shit. It holds them in there, holds them in there. Good. I wonder if I could put multiple batteries in here. Two 2700s and two 18650s. Yeah, that's, that's, it holds them in there and they're not moving around at all. Hey, you can kind of see the batteries right there. That's cool. I've never thought about using something like this for really like, uh, transporting batteries, but it kind of makes sense when you have different sized batteries. Oh yeah, you can stack them just like this. Holy shit, this is cool. So if I want to go to a vape event or if I'm traveling, I can have two 18650s that are married, two 21700s that are married, and then two single 18650s to use in mechanical mods, and they all fit in here like this. And you just close the whole thing up. And that, it, battery, batteries. I guess they wobble around a little bit, but there's nothing that they can hit. It's all plastic in there. That is a, uh, that is an insanely safe way to carry your batteries, Andrew. Thank you for this. Andrew, hit me up, bro. I need to thank you. Oh, oh, Big Joe. Okay, Big Joe. Maybe I'm not gonna read this whole, uh, I'm not gonna read this whole letter here on the vlog here, but Big Joe, one of my patrons, yo yo, Big Joe. Yeah, Big Joe, uh, Big Joe uh, came with us to uh, to Disneyland after ECC, actually. Uh, blah, 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 August at ECC, hopefully, yes, new thing, don't hesitate to ask, let me know, helping out, big booth. Oh, okay, wow, he packed a lot of stuff in here. Uh, E-Fest battery holder, battery case, stainless wool, Perfect mod contact cleaner. Uh, 14500 AW batteries for retro vaping. Oh, yes, he threw some retro vaping stuff in here. The Vapor Craze Noble V2 Mini. He packed, a, he packed in his favorite cotton as well. Oh, and he sent me aluminum black. This is the chemical for turning the recoil black on your RDAs. I'm working on a video right now just waiting for my new camera. Yeah, he had an RDA. He had a colored Rebel RDA or a colored uh, recoil, original recipe recoil. RDA, but the RR on it was black. And I thought, fuck, that looks so cool. Also, how did you do that? So he sent me along some of this stuff. Crazy. Okay, well, there's too much in here. There's a tool in here. Cuticle pusher, the best cotton tool ever. The, a glass phantom mech mod. This mod was previously the owner of Vape Fiends and he gave it to me and I think that you should be its owner. Super glue, because you can't ever find it when you need it. Dude, Bro, Big Joe, you sent me fucking super glue. That's amazing. Organic cotton balls. Yeah, dude, that's what we used to use. Yeah, this is so great. Loctite, amazing. Yeah, aluminum black. Aluminum black metal finish. I'm gonna have to wait for his review or his video to watch that. Oh, holy shit. Vapor craze. So this is an old, uh, this is an old Genesis. This is a single. So this is a single battery, single 14500, I believe, mod Genesis atomizer mod. Oh, I used to just hate the Genesis, didn't I? Oh, cool. Oh, it's so cool. Oh, that's cool. That is just so freaking cool. Oh, and it had that, that weird locking switch. I don't know if any of my subscribers currently remember glass mods, G-L-A-S, with a little line over the S, but they were some high-end, fancy, fancy mech mods. All right, cool. Cool, Big Joe, very cool, very cool. Thank you for the care package, bro. Ah, okay, this is it, dude. We're at the end. God, we're almost done. Oh, good lord. Good lord, bird. I'm not opening a shop here. What are you doing to me? Uh, crazy. This is crazy. This is, uh... This is a mountain of bird pods. Just the most bird pods I've ever seen in my life. The, the bird is that pod system that I had got a few weeks back. I had been using it a, a lot around the time. It got a little weird and gurgly on me, so I wanted to try out some, some new pods. And this is... These are all pods. This is an obscene amount of pods for me to have. Why do I have this many pods? I have one bird battery. Keep in mind, I have a single bird battery and they sent me 54 packs of, of, 
of of pods. Oh no, wait, these are starter kits. Oh, okay. Are these all starter kits? One, two, three, four, five. Okay, I got five bird kits. Okay, this makes a lot more sense now, actually. Birds, we're gonna be doing some serious bird $2 sale action uh, very soon. It's certainly over on Patreon, probably on the live stream as well. But uh, I've got a bunch of birds, a bunch of birds to give away. Where am I supposed to keep all these, Space Jam? Where am I supposed to keep all these? Anyway, uh, crazy, that's, that's crazy. Bird, bird, bird for days. Whew. Okay, cool. Well, that's going to bring us to the end here of Vape Mail, finally, I know. It's been a long segment, I know. But uh, I'm gonna check Instagram and see which one won, which RDA, which mouth to lung RDA won. It was either the Berserker or the Vape Fly Galaxies. Either way, what I'm gonna do right now is just clean up this huge mess that I have and we're gonna set up one of those RDAs and you'll see which one it is in in now. Well, Instagram voted 70% in favor of the Berserker mouth to lung RDA from Vandy Vape. So that's the one that I set up. But what I wanted to talk about real quick first was this Vape IQ that I got. It said Council of Vapor on it, but I can't find any Council, Council of Vapor um, branding on this. All I find is Vape IQ, Vape Smart, Vape IQ. And right out of the gate, one thing they did that bums me out is they have their own special charger for the battery. It's not just like a micro USB on the bottom, which would be convenient. Now you have to carry around yet another charger if you want to take your pod system with you when you travel, which to me, look, I travel a lot and I've talked about this a lot, but I much prefer pod systems or yeah, pod systems, any pod system, whether that's the Mi Pod or the Mi One or the any, any, any number of pod systems, I much prefer that they have the, just a micro USB on there. That's so much easier than carrying around. Like if I wanna take this and the Fix with me on a trip, now I'm taking two extra chargers because both the Fix and the Vape Smart Vape IQ use their own proprietary chargers. And I get it that it's cool and it's like a little magnetic housing that it sits in and that's style point. Points, you know what I mean? That's street cred. But for me, for the end user, for what I like to do, having an extra charger is kind of, you know, it's a bummer. It's another thing you have to carry around, you have to keep track of. But I will say that the battery of this Vape IQ is cool. It is a very beautiful sort of brushed aluminum, black, matte black brushed aluminum. And it's not going to really show up on video very well, but it's a very cool, very cool battery and the pods are nice and large. That looks like a large capacity pod in there. What I like about these pods is they're, these particular pods are 5%. So this is five milligram nicotine and I don't see anything on here about salt nicks or what juice they use on the inside. It doesn't say anything about salt nicotine or anything like that. I'm kind of assuming that they're salt nicotine just because of the way that they hit me in my throat when you press this down in here. There's no sort of uh, clicking or magnetic or anything like that. It just slides in and is completely held in by pressure. And that's your finished tiny little pod system right there. This is the blueberry and I've taken a few toots already, but let's have a few more. The first few toots that I took off of this had a little bit of a slurpy gurgle factor to them, but I think that's gone away now. Yeah, I feel like that's kind of gone away now. I can notice on this battery, when I change the velocity of my draw, the battery will turn on and off. And there's a very fine line where you can still be dragging on it, but the battery will be off. You have to drag a little bit sharper on this one to get the battery to activate. And I'm not a huge fan of that. It's nice, the flavor is delicious. This blueberry actually reminds me of the old, 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 I mean circa 2010 Chinese pure smoker blueberry that I used to get. It's got that very same flavor. And like I said on the packaging, I don't see anything about salt nick in here. I wanna think that it's salt nick just because that's what's popular in pod systems, but it's not really now hitting me like a salt nick at all. And maybe it's just because it's low percentage. This is only 5% or basically five milligram in here. It's not one of those like 
30 milligram, 50 fucking milligram, like I have in my Mi Pod, nothing that high. And I also want to say that the way that they package these pods, it, it, it's pretty fancy, schmancy. This comes off, you got a little thing here, you got a little thing here, you have a little you know, a, a little a little chamois cloth or something. And then you have your pods on the inside and it's a three pack and you put this little chamois cloth back on there, you close it down, you put this all together and then that's your three pack. I don't know, this is just my first couple toots on it. My first observations are, I love this battery. I love the size of it. I love the dimensions of it. It's nice and slim. It's a little bit longer. I like that the brushed metal continues almost all the way to the tip. The only thing that you see of your pod is the very, very tip there. I heard it. Did anybody else hear it? You probably couldn't hear it. It was firing on and off and on and off just by me slightly adjusting the way that I'm drawing on it. The weird thing is the light stays on the whole time, but the crackle sounds are what stop and start in it. It's nice. The blueberry flavor is, is, is a little bit delicious. All right. Well, I'm going to spend a lot more time with that pod system. In fact, what I think I'm going to do very soon is just a few pod systems kind of all together. I'm gonna to include that IQ, I'm gonna include the Miley, I'm gonna include the Bird, and I'm gonna include that Kilo 1K pod system because those are the those are kind of the newest ones out and, I, and I'd and i honestly like to compare them all together in a future video. So I'm gonna shoot for that in maybe like, a, uh, maybe a week or two after I spend some more time with all of them. But like I said, on Instagram, the Berserker Mouth to Lung RDA, it won. I put the beauty ring on it, I put it on this really old stab wood Asmodus Ultroner single 18650 regulated guy because I know that I'm not going to need to go above like 15 or 16 watts on this. The deck, it's really simple, very straightforward, very K-fun-ish. There's just two screws to capture your leads. I did a round wire build in here. This is a variation, I guess, of the Ruby build. It's around a two and a half millimeter. It's 26 gauge anarchist wire, and I did nine wraps of it. And this, it's kind of like the K-fun in that your leads need to go off in opposite directions, not necessarily in the same direction. They go off in opposite directions so you can set them down and put those set screws in place. Big, deep juice well in there. Your airflow is underneath your coils, which is off to a good start already. So I've got this all juiced up. Uh, point Came out to 0.51 on the resistance, and I have this set to 15 watts. This is loaded up with 12 milligram Strawberry Circus, which is a non-salt nick, high nicotine PGVG blend. So let's give this a shot. I did a little uh, airflow science earlier and tried out some of the airflow holes before I built it to see which one I think I might like the most. And I chose the third one over from the left. The first one is like a pinhole. It's just the tightest, tightest draw ever. The next one over is a little bit more open. And then the third one over, I think, I don't know the dimensions of this particular hole on this atomizer, but it seems to be the one I like the most as far as how it feels. It's like a smooth airflow. It's a little bit open, but it's still very, very restricted. You make sure that this is uh, juiced up. I only primed it once so far. And that's, I guess, kind of how you drip on it. Your drip tip is attached to a top cap, and then the top cap is just one O-ring right there. And you can pop this off and have access to your coil right there. And I guess that's how you drip on it, because you can't drip through the drip tip at all on this. The drip tip di inner diameter is far, far too small. But like I said, 12 milligrams, strawberry circus, boom, here we go, 0 0.51 at 15 watts. Hey, it works. Now that wasn't like a very dense cloud of vapor, but shit, man, this worked. I'm, I'm, I'm genuinely taken aback. I'm genuinely surprised by this. Holy shit, this works. It's it's working, it's working great, I thought for sure. So mouth to lung RDAs in the past that have included, included like a mouth to lung airflow have never worked for me because there's more to mouth to lung than just tight airflow. And whoever designed the Berserker, Alex Vapes, Alex Vapes who designed this Berserker, he knows what he's doing because the airflow has to come from underneath the coils. And he did that on here. The airflow comes from underneath the coils. That is how you do a proper mouth to lung vape. The vapor is a little thin, maybe, maybe just a little wispy. I don't know if I have to turn this up or not. Let's try this at, let's try this 0.51 at 19, 
what? Let's try this 0.51 at 19 watts, which is going to give me 3.5 volts. I don't know. Let's see how it goes. Hmm. A little bit more warmth, a little bit more flavor. The flavor on this, pretty delicious. Now, and this is something that uh, I have a feeling people are going to argue me, uh, argue with me about, but it's kind of an undeniable thing. PG carries the flavor of juice worlds better than VG does. So when you have a liquid with a higher PG content, you're already going to get better flavor. The flavor is going to be more intense because the PG carries the flavor so much better than VG does, which is a lot of the reason why these high VG juices have the tendency to be a little bit over flavored. They over percent on their flavors to make up for all that VG in there. This is something that way back in the day when everybody was vaping either 100% PG or a 50-50 blend, you didn't have to over flavor your juices because the PG is what carried that flavor in the vapor so well. And the flavor of this 50-50 PG VG juice in here just tastes delicious. Your coil is set up real high. Your coil's right there. And you have a big deep juice well and you have your airflow coming from underneath your coils. And juice this up have a few more toots. Plus, that's kind of a cool looking uh, little setup right there. If, if you see it without the beauty ring, it starts to look a little bit ridiculous. Like right there. Hi, don't mind me. Just my tall RDA on here. It's no big deal. But then when you put the beauty ring on there, it kind of just helps out the whole situation. Doesn't make it look quite as ridiculous. This is actually a very cool looking setup in my opinion. I don't know if the Berserker mouth to lung RDA comes with a squonk pin or not. Oh, and there are even inserts that you can put on the inside to adjust the airflow. Holy shit, how did I miss that? Okay, so you can really very much fine tune your airflow on this atomizer. Oh, it, it does come with a squonk pin. It says squonk ready. Cool. Very cool. I'm really glad this isn't just a dripper because this is something that would do amazing on a little single battery regulated squonker or even a single battery unregulated squonker. I think this would do uh, this would do really well. But for right now, using it on this little Asmodus Stabwood guy and pleasantly surprised, just very pleasantly surprised by how well this is vaping. So as you can see, the clouds aren't super dense. They're a little bit wispy, no matter what I do. Well, cool. All right, well, there you go. Berserker, mouth to lung RDA, set up, vaping it, loving it. I'm gonna vape this just a whole lot more before it gets, you know, a full, full final review on YouTube. In fact, I'm thinking about doing maybe a comparison video between the two, like the between the Berserker and between the Vape Fly. Let me know if you think that's a good idea because I love doing comparison videos. Anyway, what we're gonna do right now is just stay put exactly where we are, old school vlog style. And we are going to do some retro vaping, and I'm really excited about it. So like I was saying earlier in the vlog, I discovered eBay. I discovered eBay recently and I just started, you know, bidding on stuff, buying stuff. So I went on eBay and I found someone selling an original Kanger Subbox Mini kit. In passing recently, Casey Pickle said to me, you know, do you remember the white, the white mod with the white tank? And we were kind of going back and forth. And I was like, do you mean the, the Kanger, the Kanger sub box? She's like, yeah, yeah. The Kanger, the Kanger mini one. That was like, that was like my favorite vape. And I was kind of like, I was just kind of surprised by it. I was like, yeah, I mean, the Kanger coil heads were great. It was a great little vape. So I went on eBay and I decided to buy one just for Casey Pickle. And I figured I would set it up for her and I would set it up as part of this retro vaping. So this is a brand new in the box, sub box mini white edition. Well, there is, there is a couple scuff marks on it, but there it is. Little, look, look at this little guy. Single 18650, little tiny button, little tiny LCD display. I think I first tried this. I think I first got this kit when I was in Pittsburgh. It was one of the Pittsburgh events. In fact, it might have been the very first Pittsburgh event that they had, VCCPA in Pittsburgh. 
2015, I think. Is that how far we're going back on this right now? But it's clearly marked positive and negative. Battery goes in. It's just like riding a bike, man. You don't forget. Yeah, and there's a Kanger tank here. I remember this is the one that you had to uh, bottom fill. This was a bottom fill tank. What? Uh, what is happening here? What happened there? Oh, this is broken. What a fucking bummer, man. Are you kidding me? This is broken? Ah, uh, shit. It is. It's really broken. The whole chimney just fell out of this. Wow. What a fucking bummer. I wonder if I can find my original tank. Because I can use this coil head. But I don't know if I can find my original tank. Well, shit, sorry. I'm gonna pause right now and I'm gonna look for my original tank because I really wanna vape this and I'm bummed that this is broken. Let me just, I'm just gonna do a little bit of science here and just figure out for sure if this is broken or not. It's broken, broken, for sure broken. Shit, man. What a bummer. I mean, I only spent, I think this was 20 bucks, 19 bucks or something like that, but still, I mean, that. That kind of bums me out. All right, give me a sec. I'm gonna try to find my original Kanger Subbox Mini uh, tank so that I can actually do this retro vaping. All right, well, much success. I, I, I had to look through a lot. <laughs> I had to look through a lot to find this, but for some reason, I don't know, it's cosmic, man. That's a cosmic thing. For some reason, I hung on to that Kanger I don't know, sub, sub, sub box. It, the, the tank had a name. Why can't I remember the name of the tank and not remember the name of this tank? But I'm gonna go ahead and set this up. Uh, she wanted Anarchist Pink Lemonade, so I'm gonna put some drops in the coil head. We're gonna fill up this tank. We're, we're gonna retro vape this. We are going to retro vape this. My, my, my determination level is high right now. Yeah, it had this old school bottom fill method technique and you could never quite top it up all the way, you know? Sorry, I don't have my glasses on. People think I look like a Russian hacker without my glasses. <sighs> okay, I I'm not I'm, I'm not really super stoked about this. It says it's supposed to be a 0 0.5 and it's reading at a 0 0.2 and then it dropped down to like a 0 0.1 for a while there. Just while I was adjusting the wattage up and down, the resistance was kind of changing. Oh, something is definitely wrong with this. Son of a bitch. I knew it wouldn't be that easy. Oh, sure. Just go dig through all your stuff. Find your old, you know, Kanger sub ohm tank. Put it on your brand new Kanger sub box mini that you just bought on eBay. And then every time you press the button, the chip is just going to reset itself every single time. Kanger tech. Kanger tech. Just keeps resetting. See, now it's reading zero ohms. Uh, keeps resetting. Son of a bitch. I'm not going to be able to vape this. I might be able to put this tank on something. I wonder if it's the Subbox Mini. See, here we go. Retro vaping, just troubleshooting. I kind of got to assume that the problem is with the mod itself because I put that same Kanger sub tank on my, uh, you know, what, what was this thing called? Uh, Axis Vapes. Axis Vapes M17, and it's reading it right at a 0.6. These are supposed to be 0.5, and it's reading it at a 0.6, whereas the Subbox Mini with the battery in it was reading it at a 0.2 or a 0.1. I, I don't know what's going on. But 0 0.6, 25 watts, let's let's try out this. I, basically, I bought this whole kit just for the coil head on the inside. Hey, that's not good. Hey, that's not good either. It, it, it's that thing that I can tell that it's saturated. I can tell that the coils are wet, but it always tastes just a little bit dry. It's vaping, and the flavor is actually not too bad on this. Here, let's try it at 40 watts. What's 40 watts going to do to me? Good. It, it, it tastes good. It just feels a little bit dry. Did the Kanker sub tank always feel a little bit dry? I don't remember that. I don't remember that sensation. In fact, a lot of, a lot of juice vendors, you know, back in the day when the Kanker sub tank was the new popular thing, the majority of juice vendors at shows would use this tank to taste their juices. It, it was it was really kind of known that it was a, a reliable thing. The coil heads, the Kanger coil heads were very reliable. Now, granted, this, this could have been sitting around just in, in someone's 
you know, closet for the last few years. There's a high probability of that. There's a high probability that maybe this coil head is just old, just old dead coil head. The tank was broken and the mod doesn't work. Okay, that was definitely the driest. That was dry. That was, that was, I could feel some sort of burnt thing happening right there. I just wish you would work on the mod that you're supposed to work on. No, nope, it's just going to reset every single time. It's just going to reset. Okay, well, that was, I don't know, the, 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 the biggest letdown in the history of retro vaping. So back down to 25 watts and... Really, I'm, this is just a huge letdown. I feel so defeated. I've never felt this defeated before. So I guess as a word of warning, just be careful buying old vape gear on eBay. Is that the lesson that we're learning from this? But I think the lesson that we're also learning is that old coil heads, just if you have real old coil heads, it's, it's probably better to just throw them away, not try to reuse them. This isn't wicking well. It, it tastes okay. It doesn't taste dense. It doesn't taste like a saturated vape at all. It tastes like it's always on that cusp of just, it's just about to go dry. I don't get any crackling sensations. I don't even feel like liquids being vaporized at this. I, I give up. I give up. I'm done. I'm done. That was retro vaping. I bought a Kanger Subbox mini kit on eBay and I tried to set it up. The mod was broken. The tank was broken. The coil head is so old that it won't even wick juice anymore. And really that bums me out for the vlog, but honestly that kind of really bums me out for Casey. Like this has been sitting here for about I don't know, almost a week now. It's been like six solid days. And she's like, can I vape the Subbox Mini yet? Can I vape it yet? And I keep saying, no, I have to, no, no, I have to set it up on vlog. Once I set it up on the vlog, it's yours. I'll fill it up with Anarchist and you can just vape it. She was really looking forward to this. And now I feel like, uh, I feel like I'm letting everybody down. Yeah, that's just bad. That's just the worst. Sorry. Okay, well, this was a dumb, dumb, dumb. Why did I sing that? That made no sense. I was gonna say, this is a dumb retro vaping. Sorry, sorry for the dumb retro vaping, but you know what? Every vlog is an adventure and I appreciate you guys sticking with me through all this nonsense. Anyway, that's gonna wrap up retro vaping. I think what I want to do right now, uh, I am gonna skip getting to know Grim Green. I'm gonna skip it uh, just for this week. I've got a lot of getting to know Grim Green questions and I think I'm just gonna save those. So we're gonna skip getting to know Grim Green just this week and we are going to dive straight into some viewer mails. Just what a what a fucking letdown, man. That's like the that's like the biggest letdown of the day right there, damn it. Kanger Subbox Mini from eBay. Anyway, we're gonna jump into some viewer mails here, and I've got uh Got a bunch, got a bunch, got one flagged here from Tyler. Tyler writes in and says, hi, Nick, my name is Tyler. Hi, Tyler. I've been a sub for three year-ish now, year, years-ish? <laughs> I've been a sub for three years-ish now, uh, but I have just got to my one full year of vaping. Recently, my vape budget hands have increased, and I was wondering, oh, and I was looking at a I was looking at getting a mech tube mod and I'm torn between getting a rig mod or a broadside admiral or something else around that price range. Any recommendations would be appreciated. Feel free to use my name in this vlog if it happens to come up. Running a blue recoil and a DHD tip on my blue Envy Loch Ness and it is my daily banger. Hashtag matchy matchy. Yeah. Absolutely. That's a banging, that's a banging, that's a banging daily banger. Do I say banging and daily banger too much? Ah, I don't care. I'm going to keep saying it. Anyway, yeah, Tyler, um, cool. It's not uh, often that you run across people whose vape budget hands have increased. So he wants to get a dope mech mod, the rig mod, the, the, the descendant. Great great mech mod, the Outlaw, the 26, the, no, not the 26, the 21700 or the 2700 version, the, the, why can't I think of this? Outlaw, the Rig Mod Outlaw, also a great mech mod. I do have a Broadside Admiral. I haven't got to fiddle around with it yet, but I've heard rave reviews about the Broadside Admiral. And one mod that I would bring up that isn't necessarily real, real expensive, it's that Dreamer. I love the Dreamer mech. The matte black Dreamer mech, even in the copper version, which tarnished really very badly, I still like that mech. I still like that Dreamer mech a lot because it can use 
18650s, 2700s, and 21700s, and it's a full 25 millimeters on the top, so it can use 24 and 25 millimeter atomizers. For my money, that Dreamer mech is probably one of the most versatile mechs in the vaping market right now. Um, as for me, this week I reviewed that V God mech mod. I think that's a solid mech mod. It's a fairly solid mech mod. It's one of those things, and I keep saying this, it's not revolutionary. It's not trying to reinvent the wheel. It's just a real solid mech mod. I'm not in love with the atomizer that it comes with, but that could also be an option. And lately, I've been using that Ronin competition mod, and I don't know how much they are, so let's do some Google Foo together. Oh, these, these, okay, yeah, these Ronin mods are quite the pricey mod. This particular one that I have right now that's called the Ambition, this is 170 and that's a lot. Dude, 170 is a lot for a mech mod, but I will say, pff, I love this mech mod. It's not as versatile as the Dreamer. You can't run any other batteries other than an 18650, but there's a lot going on this mod safety-wise that I'm a real big fan of. They have a Darylin. Darylin, I said it again. It's not Darylin, it's Delrin. <laughs> they have a Delrin insert on the inside that kind of holds your battery up. In fact, if I take off the switch right here that also acts as a locking feature, battery doesn't come out. The battery is protected right there in a sleeve of Delrin and it does not come out the bottom. All of the threads, the switch itself, the way that the atomizer fits on these Ronin competition mods is just beautiful. Fit and finish, top to bottom is great. I don't know how much money, I don't know how, how high your vape budget hands have increased, but I might give the Ronin mods, uh, might give the Ronin mods a quick look there, Tyler. Cheers. I got a I got an email here from uh, Boozer. We're just gonna call this person Boozer. Hi Nick, my name is Boozer. Thanks first of all, thanks for all you do in the vaping community. Uh, you alone had a huge impact on transitioning me from smoking to vaping. Here's the deal: I have a Pulse 24 RDA, and the top cap part is stuck to the middle section. It can be removed from the base but the top and middle parts will not come apart. I've tried putting the parts in the freezer. He said he's tried putting them in hot water as well to try to separate them. He said he's pried other atomizers apart using pliers. He says, I'm scared to do this again. I don't want to damage my RDA. I did try it once or twice and it wouldn't even budge. I'm out of options. I really enjoy the Pulse 24 and I wish that I could get these parts apart so that I could at least remove the top cap instead of blowing my juice to the top or having to take both the top cap and the middle pieces off. Has this ever happened to you with an RDA? If this happens to end up in a vlog or something, use everything. You are the absolute shit, and I love you and everything that you do. Wow, Boozer, this just took a real personal turn here. I, I mean, I'm flattered. I, I'm, I'm getting engaged, so I'm sure you're a great person, um, but those feelings are, are a little bit misdirected over here. <laughs> By the way, I make it to the end of every single vlog each time. Okay, Boozer, well then, at, le at the very least, I owe you a hug. So, as for stuck atomizer parts, I am I am going to be uh, I'm going to be very little help in this department. Um, what I believe is happening is the AFC on his Pulse 24 is stuck. He said he can take it off of the base, but the middle part doesn't come apart? The AFC is stuck together? I think that's what he's saying. And here's the thing. Th this has happened to me once before. There was an atomizer. I don't remember what, even what it was called. The BMI. The BMI Goldie. The top cap was, I don't know, welded to that base. I, I, I tried everything I could possibly try to get the top cap off of that base. I don't know what happened. I don't know if an O-ring got like weird or twisted in there, or maybe the O-rings were just dry in there. I could not, not, not get it apart. And I tried the same thing, dude. I put it in the freezer, ran it under hot water, tried to get juice in there to lubricate it a little bit. And ultimately I threw it away. <laughs> I could not get them apart. And it sounds like Maybe I'm misinterpreting what is wrong with yours. Are you? St I have so many questions for you, Boozer. Are you able to build on it? Am I thinking of this wrong? Is it not the AFC that's that's stuck together? Is it the actual cap on the deck that is stuck together? Yeah, he says the top cap part is stuck to the middle section, 
and I'm assuming the middle section is that AFC and the top cap part. So as AFC is stuck together, uh, I I'm sorry, Boozer. I'm sorry. I, I, I want to say this. I, I love you. You are the absolute shit. And I'm glad you make it to the end of every vlog. And I do yo you a hug. But my advice here is going to be buy a new Pulse 24. I, I honestly genuinely cannot think of a way to do it. I'll open the question up to anybody watching this video. If you want to comment down below, just say boozer. Just put boozer real big. Be like, hey, boozer, try this. Hey, boozer, try this. Because I apologize, boozer. I'm... Uh, I'm, I'm, I don't have any ideas. I'm sorry. Oh, this is just, uh, oh, okay. This is just uh, someone saying very nice things and then requesting a shout out. So of course I'm going to read that. Hey, Nick, I'm sitting here binge watching all of your vlogs and I'm just struck by the sheer dedication you have towards vaping. It just inspired me to get more involved in advocacy and helping more new vapors. I'd like to shout out all of the vapors from India who had the strength to get off the stinkies. Feel free to use my name in the vlog, wishful thinking. You, am, you owe me several hugs because I'm sitting through all of your vlogs from your first one to date. He, R Ramesh, have you watched every vlog that I've put out? I feel like that's, I feel like that's an impossible task. In fact, I would almost go far as to say, I, I may not believe you. But on the other hand, I do believe you. Anyway, he says, P.S. Congrats on the engagement, Nick. I wish you and the lovely Mrs. Green to be an eternity of happiness and good luck. R Ramesh, uh, thank you. Thank you so much. Huge shout out to you. And yeah, absolutely. Huge shout out to all the vapors in India. It's not often I get uh, emails from vapors in India. So it's good to know. It's good to know that there's a lot of vapors, everybody. A lot of vapors out there. So shout out to all of you. I uh, got another email here from Brennan. Brennan writes in and says, uh, what's up, Nick? My name is Brennan. What's up, Brennan? Feel free to use this as you see fit. I recently picked up a Mi Pod and I was having some trouble finding the best e-liquid to use. I tried some 70, 30, 12 milligram juices, also some others, but haven't found one that I feel is just right. Doesn't seem to get hardly any flavor at all and I'm all around just not satisfied. I love MTL and, I'm, and I had really high hopes for it. Please, any advice would be great. Also, if you could give my buddy Tyler a shout out, I got him more into vaping and he has been smoke free for a while now, right? on. We both watch your videos, especially on vlog day. Sorry for the lengthy email. Keep rocking. Keep on vaping, brother Brennan. P.S. P.P.S. My YouTube is called The Cloud House. If you want to throw it out there, I will, Brennan. I'll throw that. I'll throw The Cloud House out there if anybody's interested in Brennan's YouTube. Um, as far as your Me One goes, uh, it's, 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 it's definitely your juice. It's 100% your juice. Um, I was just talking about this earlier in the vlog, but VG doesn't carry flavor at, well at all, especially in something so compact like that me pod. I have, uh, where's my second me pod? I have two me pods going right now. Uh, in one of them is a salt nick juice, and in the other one is just a 50 50 PGVG uh, 18 milligram, you know, free base nicotine liquid. And I get lots of really good flavor from it. I think you need to get a juice with a higher PG level. Either get something with a higher PG level or something saltnik. And saltnik is actually mostly PG. There's not a lot of VG in saltnik liquid, which is, which is why they have that like pretty intense flavor for using in a pod system. PG is also thinner than VG. And I have a feeling if you're putting a 70% VG in your me pod, the juice could just be a little too thick. The viscosity might just be a little too thick on it. And what you're tasting isn't necessarily a muted flavor, but it's that same thing. The same thing that happened in this Kanger sub tank. It's just not wicking a hundred percent and it's kind of moist enough to vape, but not moist enough to just have have that have that good flavor like it's always on the verge of just being kind of dry and uh i know that moist is like a, a trigger word for people which is why i like saying it so much because it doesn't bother me at all moist yeah i, I mine tastes great uh this is the salt neck juice let me get my other one because now i'm curious to see how it tastes yeah i mean that's uh that's delicious. That, that tastes amazing. Um, tastes good. First step would be try a different juice. Try to find something that's either a salt nick or a little bit higher 
PG ratio than VG ratio, and I think that could be. I think that could be. Uh, I think that could be what you're looking for there, sir. Oh, this is a great story from Crystal. Crystal wrote in and said, uh, "Hey, Grim, I don't really know where to start, but I'm writing this because I think you'll understand." On September on September 23rd was my one year vape anniversary. C- congratulations! But on September 20th, we got hit with the biggest hurricane in our history, Hurricane Maria. It was scary. I took around. It took around two months to get this to get some type of service to be able to contact my family members and around four months to get running water to this day we still have problems with our electricity but i did it she says i went through the most scariest and crazy time of my life and i did not pick up a cigarette until i found vaping i wanted to quit but never actually thought i would be able to do it when i talk with my family and tell them that i don't think they understand because it was difficult it would have just been easier to pick up a cigarette it was difficult to find a place to charge my batteries. It was difficult to make sure my mod was always charged, but I did it. I survived a category five hurricane and I didn't pick up a cigarette. If you can believe that. Yeah. Awesome. That's awesome. That's, that's awesome. Super rad. I just wrote this cause I was looking for someone who could understand. And I think you could, and I think you probably could. And I want to thank you for educating me and teaching me so much about vaping and the vaping community. If it wasn't for your videos, I really wouldn't know hardly anything. Anyways, you could always use this in your vlog if you want to. And thank you. Yeah, absolutely. A, congratulations on your one year vape anniversary. And B, congratulations on getting through Hurricane Maria and being able to still vape, like without electricity, the chaos that's going on. I I can't, I can't imagine. I'm glad you stuck with it. Congratulations. That's awesome. That that's a very inspiring story there, Crystal. Thank you. All right. I got one last email here from Chris. Chris writes in and says, Hey, Grim Green, thanks for taking the time to read this. What? That one, that one just came out of nowhere. I apologize. Hey, Grim Green, thanks for taking the time to read this. I am writing this on February 1st, and today marks three years without a cigarette. Uh, Okay, Chris, boom, congratulations. Bump it. I'm strictly an RDA guy, but at times a tank comes in handy. I'm not a fan of tanks, even though it has been about a year since I tried one, so who knows? Maybe they are better nowadays. Anyway, it's time for a new setup. Should I try a new tank or a squonker? or what? Anyway, it's time for a new setup. Should I try a new tank or is a squonker a better alternative for a guy who loves his RDAs? I'm not too familiar with the squonking trend. Thanks for everything you do and the advice, Chris. Um, Yeah, absolutely. If you're an RDA guy, if you're a dripper guy, squonking, you will take to squonking like a duck on a duck on a, a duck on a water pond. I don't know why that was so difficult to say. But yeah, you, you can just dive right into squonking. The idea of squonking is this, Chris. You have your RDA, your RDA. Uh, like example, this is the Rebel. There's there's other ones. I don't what else do I have here? Let's look at this. It doesn't have juice and it doesn't have a battery, but this is the Flav 22 atomizer and there's a hole in the bottom of your atomizer and that hole leads directly through a tube to a bottle of juice. So, when you want to remoisten your coils, you squeeze the bottle of juice, it floods your deck with juice, sucks it back down, and now you have nicely, freshly wet, you know, wet coils and wet cotton as if you had just dripped. There's a lot of great squonkers out there. A lot of them are single battery squonkers. So if you're a real high wattage vapor, you might not be able to to quite get there on like a regulated single battery squonker, but there's a lot of unregulated single battery squonkers out there, like the Pulse, the, the tried and true. Tony B Pulse Project, you know, a uh, squonker. It's just a single battery. It's uh, a switch and, and that's it. And you build your coils, you put them in your RDA. Your RDA does have to be squonkable. It has to be like a squonk ready RDA. It has to have a squonk pin included, but there's honestly not a whole lot of RDAs that exist on the market right now that don't include a, a squonk pin in one way or another. I'm, I'm, I'm a fairly big fan of squonking. I've got a few squonkers kind of go going all the time, usually two or three squonkers that I'm either just vaping for my own pleasure or vaping for, you know, to, to evaluate for a YouTube review. And I like it. And it really is like dripping without having to drip. 
So anyway, Chris, yeah, I would say uh, definitely check out a squonker. Get on YouTube, uh, get on Reddit, see what people think about certain squonkers. I know Tony B has the regulated version of his pulse coming out uh, very, very soon. There's going to be some other squonkers hitting the market real, real soon. Squonking is still, still sort of, uh, I don't want to say it's in its infancy, but squonking hasn't been a big trend for a real long time yet. So I'm going to give it some time for more, you know, better squonkers, better squonkers squonkers start coming out, but the squonkers that we have on the market right now are still pretty banging. So yeah, read up, watch some reviews. Like I said, go on Reddit, see what squonkers they're using. Uh, check out some reviews on YouTube and you know, you could end up with a dope squonker and I think it, uh, I think it'd be something that you like. Anyway, that's it. That's what I got for viewer mails this week. If anybody else has any viewer mails that they would like to see answered on this here program right here, send them on over to Nick at grimgreen.com. Just mark your subject viewer mail. I've got a fuck ton. I've got a fuck ton piled up right now, but I could always use more viewer mails. So yeah, just send them on over. So now that we're done with viewer mails, what I want to do right now is I got a freshly wicked atomizer over there. It's time for a very random juice tasting. Getting warm down here in San Diego. I had to take my flannel off. Anyway, uh, random juice tasting time. Really excited about this. This is a juice that I picked up at ECC from Culinary Confections. I have been vaping the Culinary Culinary Confe. I can't. Why can't I say Culinary correctly? Culinary Confections. I've been vaping the Culinary Confections Bonanza juice, which is their like banana type of like walnut banana bakery type of flavor, and it's stellar. This juice is, is just a beautiful flavor that I love from top to bottom. And so I wanted to give another one of their juices a try. So we're going to open Waterloo. Now the, the packaging is a little bit confusing to me, to my brain. It shows cookies and it also shows watermelon. So watermelon sugar cookies, that's a flavor that I don't think I've, I've ever tried before. That's a flavor that may not have ever existed before, but it is here. Let's see what it says on the website. So according to the website, Waterloo from uh, Culinary Confections, a burst of flavor, a medley of mouthwatering goodness and a whole lot of sugar cookie and watermelon. Waterloo is a proprietary blend made with the best ratios to enjoy day in and day out. Let the brisk, refreshing watermelon flavor wash over you as you float down a river of flavor in your shortbread kayak. God, you guys are good at writing flavor descriptions. Culinary Confections brings you once again a flavor to be savored. So breathe in and breathe it out and repeat as this addictive flavor will leave you wanting more. Waterloo. Watermelon sugar cookie? What is life right now? So first things first. Oh, look, it's a chubby gorilla, so it's already leaking. Let's give it a uh, the old knuckle test. Uh, it tastes like a watermelon sugar cookie, man. I've never had a watermelon sugar cookie, but I have never been more excited than I am right now to vape a watermelon sugar cookie. Um, this is going on an original recipe recoil, uh, just because it's it's what I had cleaned and freshly wicked for the day. The coils I have in here are some uh, framed staples, and I don't exactly remember where they came from. It might have been those J-Boy coils. Uh, I think they're the J-Boy coils. I'm not 100% sure. I love them. I love these coils in this atomizer. Ah, vapors. Waterloo. Watermelon sugar cookie? What is happening in the world right now? I'm so excited to taste this. Just shut up and taste it, Nick. Okay, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna sit back, I'm gonna vape this for a little bit, and then we're gonna come back and talk about it. After all of that vaping, I still don't know how I feel about it. Seriously, uh, I, 
I don't know. I don't even know what to think of this juice. Right away, up front, when I inhale it, is sugar cookie. I get a, a real big sugar cookie. I don't get a lot of watermelon. I don't even get a lot of watermelon on the exhale. I get some watermelon on the exhale. If I exhale through my nose, I can smell the watermelon. I can kind of taste the watermelon that way. But for the most part, uh, pardon me. Uh, again, but for the most part, I get a really like dense, warm sugar cookie bakery type of sensation from this. I don't get that like refreshing watermelon flavor that it, that is advertised on this. I get some watermelon, especially if I exhale through my nose, like I said, but I just don't get a whole hell of a lot of watermelon. It's weird. It's just a real weird combo. I get some light watermelon if I exhale through my nose, but for the most part, I'm just getting sugar cookie. And the sugar cookie tastes a little weird on the inhale, and I'm wondering if that's from the watermelon. I'm also wondering if this is just too hot of a build for this particular juice. I'm vaping the Bonanza in that uh, Wake Mod Co. Littlefoot kit. It's, it's a maximum of like... 40 watts that I'm vaping it at, and this is a 0.16 at 3.7, so I'm getting a lot more wattage, and I'm just wondering if this bill that I have this in is too hot for this e-liquid. This might be the first time in random juice tasting history where at the end I'm completely undecided on how I feel about a juice, and even kind of what I'm getting from the juice. I do think the warmth of this build plays a lot into how I'm interpreting the flavors, and I get the vibe that this is just too hot of a build for this juice. I feel like this juice is a little bit more delicate, and it might need a little bit lower of a wattage, a little bit maybe more of like a flavor build. God, it's so weird. It's sweet, but it's not too sweet. It is bakery, it is sugar cookie, and I get a little bit about watermelon. I get a little bit of watermelon on the exhale. As far as those flavors like living and mingling together on the palate, it's just real weird, and like I've already said a hundred times, I'll repeat myself again, I kind of think this build is just too hot for it. So I'm just going to leave that right there. I'm not going to recommend this. I'm not going to say it's gross. I'm not going to say don't buy it. I'm not going to say you should definitely buy it. I'm going to say it's a watermelon sugar cookie flavor that's, that's just a real interesting strange flavor. Weird. This, this this random juice tasting has just been a roller coaster of emotions. Wow, it's so weird. I The more that I focus on it, if I focus on that watermelon, I can get more watermelon out of it. Okay, well, I'm going to wrap this up. I'm done tasting this Waterloo juice. Man, it's weird. That is a weird flavor. Uh, next week, maybe we'll try the last Culinary Confections flavor. What's the last flavor that they do? They do three. They do uh, uh, Mellow, which is a melon ice cream flavor. It looks like a melon milkshake. They do the bonanza, which is the banana walnut. And then they do Waterloo, which is the watermelon sugar cookie. So, so far bonanza, they hit it straight out of the park. Waterloo, I feel like is coming up a little bit short for me. So next week we'll just continue this train and, and we'll jump on the mellow and we'll try the, uh, the cantaloupe milkshake flavor. Anyway, Weird. That's still weird. It's still weird me out a little bit. But what I want to do right now is we have come down to the end of this here vlog video. We're going to wrap this up with everybody's favorite segment and my favorite segment. It's the favorite comments of the week. All right. Uh, I always, I'm always chuckling just a little bit because I read through some of my favorite comments of the week and, uh, we're going to just start it off here. Jader vapes left a comment and said, hello, we're heavy metal toxicity and we're going to play our song trace amounts. <laughs> that's from, uh, you know, that's from when we were talking about the, the heavy metal, uh, possible heavy metals, uh, within, with, within vapor, which by the way, I've heard no updates from that. I haven't seen where that science has gone yet. All we're going on is, uh, what Dr. Farsalinos, whom I trust says about it. But yeah, I thought heavy metal toxicity, uh, <laughs> that could be a band name, Jader. That could definitely be a band name. I got another one here from Cameron and this one is, is long, but Cameron left a comment and said, speaking on the 
morning poop after clocking in at work thing. I am an unlucky soul. I'm unfortunately lactose intolerant, but not the type that I wind up in the hospital. I basically have 10 minutes after ingestion of dairy to find a bathroom. So the one day I had to make a bowl of cereal, Reese's Puffs, just because I'm still a child at heart, and I walk to work because I live a 10 minute walk from my place of work. I think you know where I'm going with this. So unfortunately, by the time I showed up, I forgot to clock in just as I showed up and I just had to make a run for the bathroom. Long story short, I wound up having to explain to the store manager as well as the owner how I managed to show up five minutes early but still needed someone to override the clock because I was clocking in 15 minutes late. <laughs> Hope this brightened your day as much as the vlogs brighten mine. Rock on. Um, Yeah, absolutely, Cameron. You know, if there's one thing, and this is going to be this is going to be weird and this is going to gross people out. But if there's one thing that, that I find highly, highly entertaining in the world, it is stories like this. I have my own intestinal distress stories that I would, I don't know, maybe be willing to share, maybe be willing to share on video. They're, they are quite, quite embarrassing. A few people, I think Ruby, I think Ruby and Casey, Ruby and Casey, I know Jess has heard a few, I know Kent's heard a few. I think the squad kind of knows all of my intestinal distress stories because for some reason that comes up as a topic of conversation, but uh, I, I find these stories fascinating and I just wanted to share a quick one of my own. It's not me, it's my buddy, and I'm not gonna reveal his name, but if he ever watches this vlog, which I don't know if he ever will, he'll know that the story's about him. But I was waiting in line for the bus. We were waiting at the bus stop. And this is in high school, uh, freshman year of high school, I wanna say. And we're waiting for the bus at the bus stop. And me and my buddy, we're just, you know, it's morning. So we're hanging out and we're just talking and all this stuff. And I hear my buddy fart real, real bad. Like it was an intense fart. And I was like, whoa, way to go. And he's like, I gotta go. And he walked pigeon toed, butt cheeks clenched together all the way back home down this long street. And as he was turning around to walk away, the bus came and I'm like, oh. so I got on the bus and we passed him and I'm looking at him through the bus and he's just walking like so straight faced and so tensed and like clenching his butt cheeks together. It was one of the most awkward and hilarious things uh, that have ever happened to me. And then uh, later when he eventually showed up to school, uh, I, I just didn't ask him about it. I just, I, I just said, is everything okay? It's like, everything's okay. I said, okay, good. As long as everything's okay. I find stories like that so entertaining because it's something that is like borderline out of your control. You know what I mean? These stories like this where, I mean, I get it, he's lactose intolerant, but sometimes it's just out of your control. Anyway, Cameron, thank you. I, I thought that was, uh, I thought that was pretty hilarious. Got another one here from William. William just left a comment and said, that's right, bend it over and stuff it in. Great instructions. <laughs> you know, vaping, vaping is Full, I mean, full to the brim of that's what she said jokes. Lots of dirty, weird innuendos. We got mech moths that look like dicks. We got things like stuffing and juice and licking and mouth and putting it in your mouth. And there's so many that's what she said jokes. It's the majority of what vaping is. Um, Got another one here from Andy. Oh, <laughs> this is an old one. Uh, he left a comment and said, the old gods are dead. All hail the atmosphere limes. <laughs> For the longest time upstairs, I had a squash. And you, someday, maybe I'll tell you the whole squash story, but I had a squash on my uh, on my stove and it just happened to be in the background of my beer tasting and I was like, oh look, we got an atmosphere squash and the atmosphere squash stayed for like three weeks. Three beer tastings had the atmosphere squash. Then we switched to atmosphere limes and now up, as far as what's upstairs right now, I have no idea. I have no idea, but you do because you already watched the beer tasting segment that I haven't shot yet. Weird. Oh, it's been a while since we've had one of these. Uh, Relentless left a comment and just said, I pooed a little. <laughs> I don't know why. I don't know why. And then the very next one, Ross left a comment and just said, turd. And I don't know if he's talking to me. He called me, pardon me. Did he call me a, a turd? 
Is that what you're doing there? Did you call me a fucking turd, Ross? That's messed up, bro. That is messed up. And lastly, Eric, uh, I recognize you, Eric. I reckon I recognize you, Eric. Um, he called me out. He called me out on the way that I speak. Uh, he just left a comment and said, Nick, very, very green. <laughs> yeah, I know. I use the descript. I use very a lot. I say very, very cool or like very, very nice. Very, very swooshy. Very, very flavorful. Very, very cloudy, dense, thick vapor. Very, very good battery life. I say very, very a lot. And I don't know why I say it. It's just a habit I got into. If anybody else has any suggestions as to what I could say instead of very, and I have the tendency to say nice a lot too. Flavor, real nice. Airflow, real nice. Fit and finish, real nice. The colors on it, real nice. Switch on this mech, real nice. I have like three descriptors that I say. One of them is nice, one of them is good, and that's it. And then I add very. So I either say very good or very, very good, or I say very nice and very, very nice. It's a bad habit, Eric, and I appreciate you calling me out on it because I'm well aware of it and I know, <laughs> I know that I need to change. Anyway, that's it. We're gonna wrap this up. Those are my favorite, favorite comments of the week. I'm just going to take a quick look around my room here and make sure I didn't forget anything. Yeah, uh, honestly, I think we're all good. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up. That's what I got for the vlog this week, everybody. Thank you, as always, just so much for watching. And I know I say this a lot, but the everyone that makes it to the end of the vlog, you are my favorite. And if I ever see you in real life, I do owe you a hug or I also dispense crisp high fives. But yeah, that's what I got. I'm gonna sit here and I'm gonna vape on this watermelon sugar cookie juice just a little bit more because I find it so fascinating. But anyway, that's it. That's what I got, everybody. Um, we should be on a normal schedule at least through the end of March. And like I said in the beginning, that's when things are going to get just a little bit wacky. Anyway, that's what I got. This is done. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining me. And as always, no matter what, let's keep on vaping.